you know, all I know is Army, you know. I joined the Army because I thought it was the only out I had out of high school because I had no way to pay for school and didn't have that good a GPA in high school. Um, I joined to have a steady paycheck. Um, you get free schooling out of it. You um, health care benefits. You, know, you get a bunch of cool stuff, but there's a catch. We were we had been you know benefits, everything medical. I didn't have to worry for anything, but now you know we have to get we have to get medical insurance. We have to get you know insurance, you know life insurance, you know just anything that order. You know we have to you know provide all that, and it just yeah, it worries me a little bit. But I know we're gonna get through it. You know. You know the VA does try. It's it's uh it's been. A learning experience for the VA, I think these wars has to change a lot, and uh, so a lot of people criticize it for changing too slowly, you know, and taking eight years to to change. But that's kind of the nature of the beast. The VA is this gigantic, massive bureaucracy, and you know, it's not going to change overnight. Should it? Should they have known some of this stuff was, you know, before they went to war in the early years of the war, that uh, they were going to need this much more funding for for psychological problems uh, for to help women veterans they probably should have and uh, it, it, it's, but it has moved slow. I get disability from the VA. The VA gives me a uh, $450 a month. I should be getting $630 a month but uh, the VA uh, believes that they have to pay back the money that the Army gave me over a certain amount of years which is uh, crazy because that's money they owed me. That was, that was my money. You know, I got hurt, and that was all I got out of them was that money. And now, since I'm getting disability from the VA, which, you know, they don't have to give you disability, but it's the VA, you know. They're, they take care of your soldiers and stuff, you know. They take care of the people. And there should be no reason why they have to pay back the money that they gave me. It's like the military got away with hurting somebody for the rest of their lives, and no repercussion for it. They didn't lose any money. They're getting it all back, you know. They basically... You know, destroyed my destroyed my career. You know, there's still this gulf that exists. There's, people don't really understand what they have been through and what they're going through when they come back, and uh, and I think a lot of veterans feel like that that the civilian society doesn't understand them, um, uh, and so that gulf is there and it's big, and it's not something that's just going to be uh, around for the next couple of years as the war's in. This is going to be issues that are going to be with us for 20, 30 years um, as, as kind of the, the fallout from, from a lot of the medical side and the psychological side play out over the next couple of decades. The timing of this, of coming back during the recession, is tough. And, uh, um, you know, unemployment numbers are a lot higher for young veterans as opposed to young civilians. Um, so that, that, that's a big one. Um, and, and, you know, substance abuse is, is, uh, is, also, is also an issue, and that kind of goes hand in hand, though, with, the, with PTSD and, and um, you know, depression and, and kind of other psychological issues that, uh, that soldiers face when they come back. And, um, you know, a lot of it is, is self-medicating for that. They, they don't fit into the, the civilian life. Usually, I'd say it's people who get out of the army who are made to get out of the army and they want to join and they don't let them join, you know, because either they're hurt, you know, or crazy in the head or something, you know, and the only way they can think of, you know, is to, you know, being normal is filling themselves with drugs, you know, or killing themselves, you know, to stop the pain, I guess, from, you know. They don't sit there and tell you that you're gonna get treated like crap. You're gonna have someone degrade you every day. They don't sit there and tell you that you can't go home every day to see your family or, you know, make a phone call when you're in Iraq or something. You know, they they don't tell you that all that stuff. You know, work on weekends and stuff. They don't they don't add that. They don't put that in the pamphlet. <laughs> you know, they, if they made a pamphlet for all that stuff, then nobody would want to join the military. You know, so they sit there and I wouldn't say lie, but they. They bend the truth. It said everything. They they told him. They told him that he would have 
everything, and then if he got out, they the same, you know, but I guess not. I hope everything works out now in the future, and I hope that my path is still clear, you know, nothing gets in my way.